Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be on mocking God. In Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7, it says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now, we're going to be covering a little bit of stuff. And uh, basically the theme of this is the way that the LBGT used the rainbow flag as a mocking to God. Now, one other thing. I think Bright Eon, my other account, I think they've been hacked. And um, not just my account. I think the whole website is gone. I'm not sure yet. It's too early to tell. But uh, I got an error message. I check my, my sites almost every day to make sure they're still up and available. But a lot of you may not know it, but um, Intel, which makes the chips, the microchips, the processor, the main computer chips, uh, central processing units, they call them CPUs, for computers, is an is real I company. Take those three real words, is, real, and I, and put them together. Make one word out of it. I don't know what uh, city they're in, but they make the chips over there. They're not an American company. And um, I found in the uh, 90s that they were, uh, I don't know about them, but one of the three-letter American alphabet agencies. They're into the intelligence. Uh, but they were, they, they were demanding that all chips have a back door to them. So I don't care how long your password is, what kind of stuff you have on your computer. There's a back door on every single computer. They can plant child porn. They can crash your computer. They can copy everything on your computer. They can do pretty much anything they want. So uh, Bright Eon servers might have been destroyed or hacked. I don't know. Matter of fact, I think uh, uh, there's been um, some cities in Florida that have been uh, hacked where their files have been encrypted and they were demanding, like one city, I think it was a four hundred or $500,000 payment they demanded. I wouldn't be surprised if the uh, is real I uh, was behind this because, hey, if you can hack into somebody's computer and uh, scramble all their files where it's encrypted and uh, make a quick half million bucks, hey, pff, you know. But uh, Bright Eon might have been destroyed. I don't know. Now, on my BitChute channel and my Minds channel, I uh, did a thing on Antifa and Trump. I don't dare put it on YouTube because I want to keep my YouTube channel. Um, but, you know, what can I tell you? All right, let's, uh, let's go and how they mock God. In Proverbs 14, 9, 14, 9, it says, Fools, fools make a mock at sin. But among the righteous, there is favor. All right, let's read 2 Chronicles chapter 36. I don't want to read the whole thing, but uh, let's start in verse 11. 
Zedekiah was one and twenty years old when he began to reign, and reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil, evil in the sight of the Lord his God, and humbled not himself before Jeremiah the prophet, speaking from the mouth of the Lord. And he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who had made him to swear by God, but he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart by turning unto the Lord God of Israel. Moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen, sounds like America today, transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen, and polluted the house of the Lord, which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. And the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, rising up betimes and sending, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. So here it is, God had compassion and sent some messengers. But, um, well, let's read what, what, how the people received them. Verse 16. But they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of God rose against his people till there was no remedy. Uh, that's when the... Uh, that's when the Lord says, oh, that's it. I've had enough of this. Verse 17. Therefore he brought upon them the king of the Chaldean, Chaldeans, uh, Chaldees. Now that's the, uh, the Medes. I think the Medes and the Persians, the Chaldeans. Nope, I'm sorry. That was the Babylonians. Uh, they were part of the Babylonian Empire. I'm sorry. Therefore he brought upon them the king of the Chaldean Chaldees, who slew their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary, and had no compassion upon young men or maiden, old man or him that stooped for age. He gave them all into his hand. And the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king and of his princes, all these he brought to Babylon. And they burnt the house of God and break down the wall of Jerusalem and burnt all the palaces thereof with fire and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof. People, the temple that the Babylonians destroyed and the ba temple that the Romans destroyed were both destroyed on the same anniversary date. How's that for God sending a message? Out of 365 days a year, they were both destroyed on the same exact day. Just different years, right? So, um, I think the mathematical prop probabilities of that happening is uh, what? 365 times 365 so multiply 365 by 365. Tell me what the mathematical probability of that is. It's, uh, you know, it's like winning the lotto, right? And they burnt the house of God and break down the wall of Jerusalem and burnt all the palaces thereof with fire and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof. And them that had escaped from the sword, he carried away to Babylon where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia. To fulfill, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths. That was 70 years, right? For as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill three score and 10 years. A score is 20. So three score is 60 plus 10. That's 70. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, All the kingdom, 
kingdoms of the earth hath the Lord God of heaven given me, and he hath charged me to build him an house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people? The Lord his God be with him, and let him go up. So the people of Jerusalem mocked the prophets of God. But guess what? Cyrus, king of Persia, which is modern-day Iran, people, um, <laughs> he was doing more for the Lord than those of Jerusalem. All right. So what is the deal? How is it that the rainbow flag is mocking God. Well, let's go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an helpmeet for him. A helpmate. Right? Uh, let's see. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the earth and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helpmeet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother. See, when you get married... Ain't supposed to be no mama, boys. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. You see, the woman was made to be a help for the man, and I suppose for each other's pleasure and for reproduction. So when you think about it, sodomy is rebellion against what God created. Think about it. In uh, 1 Samuel, okay, 1 Samuel 15, 23, it says, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. The punishment for witchcraft was immediately to be put to death, period. I mean, there was no, well, you know, she's a good witch, or, you know, so, you know, we should help her. No. All witchcraft was, in Bible days, was to be put to death. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. All right, so let's take a look. Where did this rainbow come from? Well, it comes from Genesis. It has to do with Noah and the flood. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. If you want to know who the sons of God were, read Job 38. They were shouting for joy at the creation of the earth. Adam didn't come until six days after the earth was created. So whatever beings they were, these were, existed prior to the earth. I suggest you read Genesis 1 and 2 and 
figure out what day the angels were created. Well, guess what? It's not listed. So if God didn't list why he created the angels in the first six or seven days of creation, they had to exist prior to the earth. They had to. Read Job 38. Read it. If you want to know who the sons of God were. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh. Yet his day shall be an hundred and twenty years. See, prior to this, people had lived for hundreds of hundreds of years, but now the Lord is limiting their lifespan. Verse 4, there were giants in the earth in those days. I bet you the NBA could have made pretty good use of them, huh? There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that. You wonder where Goliath came from when he faced David? After the flood? Here you go. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Think Hercules. Now, sons of God do not become sons of God uh, believers don't become sons of God until the New Testament when they are filled with the Holy Spirit. And people will say, well, you know, yeah, they are. But verse 5 takes a knife and sticks it into the heart of that doctrine. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his hearts of his heart was only evil continually. See, people will tell you that sons of God here are godly men, but the Bible says, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So much for the sons of God being godly men, right? Verse 6, And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Now, people, God is without sin. Mankind is sinful. The Bible says, let God be true, but every man a liar. Well, and they'll tell you, there's famous internet preachers that'll tell you that God's repenting and our repenting is the same thing. I don't think so. God doesn't repent of evil. We have to repent of our wickedness. God was, you know, it says, and it repented the Lord that he'd made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. God was almost sorry that he, he didn't even bother to create man because of all the evil and the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. But Noah found grace, grace in the eyes of the Lord. You see, there was grace in the Old Testament. People that tell you no, don't know what they're talking about. Uh, if you're interested, my YouTube channel has a playlist. You click on my name underneath the video, takes you to the home page, and then it'll, at the top middle, it'll say playlist. You click on that, you go to the bottom, and I've got an entire playlist on what happened in Genesis 6. 
I mean, it proves without a, a doubt who the sons of God were. Um, and uh, that's where the Canaanites came from. But uh, that is one of Satan's most hated doctrines of the Lord. Absolutely hates it. Does not want you to know who the giants were in the Bible and the Canaanites and why God told Israel to go into the land and utterly destroy them. I mean, that's, you know. All right, so Genesis 6, 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. Why would the Bible say he was perfect in his generations? Because he was perfect in his bloodline. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh, except for Noah. Well, it doesn't say that, but, you know. When the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, you have to ask yourself, did Jesus sin? Well, guess what? If Jesus was just a man, he's a sinner, just like everybody else. But the Bible declares that he was tempted as we are, yet without sin. So just because the Bible says all doesn't always mean all. It said all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. But just before that, in, in verse 9, it says, Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. So all means all except Noah. Just like, you know, when it says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Did Jesus sin and come short of the glory of God? Uh, no. But it says for all. So all does not always mean all. And I got a Bible study on that too, if you're interested. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood, rooms thou shalt make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And that's, that's tar. Um, and then it tells you what the size of it is. Now, there was a guy that was a marine engineer, a shipbuilder. He designed ships. And uh, he uh, looked upon the dimensions of the ark. And he says, you know what? This ark was about the size of a World War II aircraft carrier of what they called the Jeep carriers. Uh, they were escort carriers, what they called escort carriers. They weren't fleet carriers. The fleet carriers were larger and faster, and they could keep up. They were among the fastest ships in the Navy. Uh, but the escort carriers were made more for convoy duty, carrying airplanes for convoy duties. Um, they could play secondary roles, but they were slower. They couldn't keep up with the fleet, but they could keep up with uh, convoys carrying troops and supplies and what have you. And they would supply air cover against, you know, other enemy ships and submarines and what have you and for um, scouting ahead. I believe a fleet carrier carried about 80 planes, uh, an escort carrier about, I think about 40 planes. But, um, you know, they were not small ships. <laughs> You're talking a pretty good sized ship, you know. Verse 15, and this is the, uh, uh, and oh, and the marine engineer made a, uh, a scale model of the ship and put it in a tank and then started 
moving it side to side so that there would be waves created. And he said this, <laughs> he says, this is a very stable design. Matter of fact, he did a computer simulation of it. And he says, this is absolutely the most stable design of a ship that could possibly be made. I wish I still had that. It was on VHS. I watched that video oh, back when I was first came to the Lord back in the early 90s. Um, and this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. So that's about 450 feet. The breadth of it 50 cubits and the height of it 30 cubits. A window shalt thou make it to the ark and in a cubit thou shalt finish it above and the door of the ark thou shalt set in the side thereof with lower second and third stories the, uh, shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and every living thing that is in the earth shall die. See, right here he says, every living thing that is in the earth shall die. So if you're not in the ark, you're gone. But with thee will I establish my covenant. What's a covenant? It's like a contract. And thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. All right, let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 7, verse 12. Uh, and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And the selfsame day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. They and every beast after his kind, and all the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and every fowl after his kind, every bird of every sort. Um, and they went in unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they, and they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased, and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. And the waters prevailed, and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly, exceedingly upon the earth, and all, all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. Now, there's people in Christian identity who will say, Ah, oh, well, you know, it's just a local flood. It was just in the Middle East. Well, you know, you go to Mount Everest in the Himalayas, and guess what they find up there? Seashells. So, what can I tell you? I think the flood was over the whole earth. That's... You know, 15 cubits upward did the waters prevail and the mountains were covered and all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beasts and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and of every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land died. And every living Substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle, and the creeping things, and the fowls, uh, the fowl of the heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive, and that, and they that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth, an hundred and fifty days. You know, it'd be kind of hard to do that if, you know, if it was just a local flood, you know. 150 days.
All right, let's go to Genesis 9. We're going to skip around a little bit. Uh, verse 1, And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as a green herb have I given you all things. But flesh with the blood thereof, I'm sorry, but flesh with the, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. All right, so God said, don't, don't eat blood. All right. And what does Hollywood depict vampires? Oh yeah, drink, they drink, they eat the blood, they drink the blood, and, and they live forever, right? Uh, Hollywood is always the opposite of what the Bible says. You know, if you want to know what the Bible says on a subject, look at Hollywood and the world, and what they teach, and do the opposite. And you'll be right with God every time. I guarantee it. And surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast, will I require it, and at, and at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God made he man. See, murder was really a bad thing because, you know, man was made in God's image, basically um, in a way, you're kind of trying to kill God by killing man, right? And you, be fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth, and multiply therein. And God spake unto Noah and to his nuns, uh, sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. Now, people... Noah and his sons are not apple trees, okay? When it talks about seed, it's talking about children. Verse 10, And with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl and of the cattle and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the field, and I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more, by the waters of a flood, neither shall there be any more be a flood to destroy the earth. Now, this is not saying that there's not going to be floods. There's not going to be a universal flood to destroy the entire earth. Um, next time, it's going to be fire. But before the fire destroys the earth, there's going to be an earthquake and a bunch of earthquakes, and I think I'm that's going to be my next Bible study. Whole lot of shaking going on, uh, like California. Oh, yeah, and God said, verse 12, and God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. What does perpetual mean? It means forever. Verse 13. I do set my bow in the cloud. Have you ever seen a bow and arrow? A bow's curved. So when he's talking about setting a bow in the cloud, he's talking about the rainbow, people. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud and I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh 
that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. So, why does the LBGT movement take the rainbow colors as a flag mocking God? Think about it, people. Think about it. All right, so Genesis chapter 13. Genesis 13, 13. Ha, huh. 13, unlucky number, right? Genesis 13, 13. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And then you can uh, read the rest where God makes his covenant with Abraham. Very important. And if you go to my playlist, I have an entire playlist on covenants that God made with various people, but specifically Abraham. All right, let's take a look at Genesis chapter 18, verse 17. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? Now, have the Jews blessed all nations? Have the black Hebrews blessed all nations? Questions to be answered. Verse 19, For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. All right, verse 22. And the men, see, sometimes angels are called men. You find out later that these are angels. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham stood near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure, there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy, not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should do, as, uh, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Perventure, there shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Wilt thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake again unto him, and he spake unto him yet again, and said, Peradventure there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. And he said unto him, O Lord, let not the Lord be, uh, O let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Peradventure there shall be thirty be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure. There shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. People, when, you, when the Lord can't find ten righteous in New York City, Los Angeles, Chicago, Miami, Atlanta, look out. 
I wonder if there's 10 righteous people in Washington, D.C. or Sacramento, California. That's their capital. And he said, I will not destroy it for 10's sake. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham, and Abraham returned unto his place. Now, how do we know those two men that went toward Sodom were angels? Genesis 19.1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him. And entered into his house, and he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house about. They surrounded the house, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. And when it's talking about, uh, you know, when it says, And Abraham knew his wife Sarah, and she conceived. Oh, yeah. To know somebody biblically was, you know, sex. Now, how are these men going to have no men? Anal. Sodomy. Rebellion against God, people. Bring them out unto us that we may know them. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and, he, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. God forbid we offer our virgin daughters to sodomites. How about we offer them something else? I'm thinking, oh, I don't know, a machete, 12 gauge. I don't know. That's, you know, what can I tell you? Only unto these men do nothing, and therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn. And he will needs be a judge. In other words, this guy came here as a visitor, but now he thinks he's a ruler. Now we will deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house with them and shut to the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness both small and great, so that they weary themselves to find the door. Now, physical blindness, spiritual blindness, both, I believe. In Luke chapter 6 and verse 39, Jesus said, And he spake a parable unto them, Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall? into the ditch oh yeah back to genesis verse 12 and the men said unto lot hast thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city bring them out of this place for we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxen great before the face of the lord and the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. Now, can mere human men strike these people with blindness? No, they're angels, people. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-laws, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of the place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-laws. In other words, they think, Ah, oh, pfft. This guy's been drinking too much. You know, he's gone crazy. He's nuts in the head. So, 
All right, let's uh, let's finish this up. All right, verse 15. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the, main, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. In other words, don't be looking behind because... You know, oh, we're we're gonna miss our microwave oven at the city and and our barbecue pit and you know, don't look back, look forward. Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Neither that uh, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them. Oh, not so, my Lord. Behold, now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight and hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. Behold, now this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become hither, thither. Therefore the city, uh, the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot reigned, uh, when Lot entered into Zoar, and the Lord reigned upon Sodom, and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of those cities, that which grew upon the ground. Now, people, there's a book called The Bible as History. I think it's Vernon Keller is the author, German archaeologist. What's interesting is they dug around the area. I think it was the Dead Sea, if memory serves me correctly. I haven't read, read this book since the 90s, but I was uh, an avid reader when I first came to the Lord. And they found a layer of glass under the sand. Glass. And, I mean, it's like a layer. I mean, just miles. Now, you have to have an extremely high temperature to turn sand into glass. And basically, it's melted sand that crystallizes and turns into glass. Um, an open-air fire just won't do it. I mean, it's extremely hot. Matter of fact, they never saw this type of um, glass until they went out into the Nevada, Nevada desert where they were doing the atomic testing. They were testing the atomic bombs that they were going to drop on Japan. And then they saw those high temperatures turned sand into glass. You can't turn glass into sand with just plain wood in the open air doesn't happen you've got to have a furnace where it concentrates the heat so how did that layer of glass get out there in the desert in the open air in the sand i mean it's not just a i mean it's a sheet that, of glass that goes on for miles well god rained fire and brimstone down right i think that was a, a testimony to his power. But you know what? You don't hear this stuff. They don't tell you this because they don't want you to know that the Bible stories are true. So, 
How do they mock God with their little rainbow flag? Think about it. That's what they're doing. They're mocking God and the believers. And let me tell you something, people. When Christians mock God by tolerating this kind of behavior, well, let's, let's read what happens. Well, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, Jesus said, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, in other words, if it does, you know, if it's not salty anymore, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast down and to be trodden under foot of man. In other words, we're supposed to be the salt of the earth, but when the salt doesn't have any flavor anymore, it's to be thrown under the ground and to be walked on by men. People, because so-called believers tolerate wickedness, Judgment's coming. And let me tell you something. Judgment begins at the house of God. Did you know that? It does. Judgment begins at the house of God. In 1 Peter 4.17, it says, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel? All right, people, I hope you learned something. And oh, by the way, if you want to know more about salt, um, I did a Bible study on salt. Did a Bible study on a lot of things, so. All right, um... All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.